Shark Week has completely freaked me out, but if I stay out of the ocean, I'm safe, right? <laughs> no. Hi friends, not food, Natalia. And Julian. Here for D News, just when you thought it was safe to get back in the water, Discovery airs Shark Week. I know all the stats on shark attacks, how they're usually not aggressive, and how you're twice as likely to be killed by a vending machine, but I'd still rather go swimming with a vending machine than a shark. So as long as I stay out of salt water where all the aggressive sharks are, I'm good, right? Bull shark. Natalia, language. No, no, the bull shark. The aggressive 11 foot tooth factory that likes to headbutt its prey can swim upriver into fresh water like it ain't no thing. Why are you ruining everything for me? Well, you best fetch your umbrella because I'm about to rain on your parade. There are plenty of freshwater fish that are just as scary as sharks. Like when I say the Amazon, you say? Piranha. And they have occasionally attacked and killed humans. But while those favorite henchfish of Bond villains are scary, there's always a bigger fish. What could be worse than a swarm of scissor jawed fish that bite off fingers and toes? The payara. That sounds like a tropical fruit. Name three scary things about the payara. Well, for start, its main dish is the piranha and they can grow up to four feet long. Oh, and they have four to six inch long fangs on their lower jaws, giving them their nickname, the vampire fish. One, two, three. Three scary things about the vampire fish. All right, not bad, but I can name another vampire fish that's way worse, parasitic lampreys. They're eel-like and not as huge or fanged like the payara, but they are actually vampiric. They use those horrible sucker-like mouths rimmed with regenerating teeth to latch onto larger fish, and then they use their tongues that also have teeth to rasp away the flesh. Why? Because they want to suck your blood. Ah! Ah! My vampire was much better. All right, fine. Yeah. They don't care, though, what they latch onto either. They'll even cling inside another fish's gills and suck away. Sea lampreys will actually spend the majority of their lives in freshwater and are an invasive species in the Great Lakes. Silver lampreys are also in the Great Lakes, plus they can be found in the Mississippi River from Minnesota down to Mississippi. Though very rare, there are occasionally attacks on humans when they're starved. All right, all right, but I've got one to trump them all. A monstrous relic from eons ago with bony and penetrable scales and rows of sharp, pointy teeth. Behold the alligator gar. 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 Anyways, behold it. Ah! Is it gone? Uh, no, it's this living fossil. It's still very much around in the southeastern US and they can be gargantuan. The largest ever caught was almost eight and a half feet long and weighed 327 pounds. They can survive in rivers and swamps and brackish water. They look scary and they'll eat fish, turtles, and seabirds. But there have actually been no confirmed attacks on humans. Oh, so it's not so bad then. So would you say your hype was a bit garish, garish? How God. about how about how about I do the jokes? Oh, okay. okay. All right. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But this raises an interesting point. Very very rarely do humans get attacked in the water, even when there are sharks or gars or other scary animals around. We're just not a usual part of their ecosystem, so a lot of them don't have an interest in us unless they're starved or threatened. Right, but that hasn't stopped us from overreacting. Alligator gars were once culled because they were thought to be a nuisance, and that ugly mug probably didn't help much. When seven swimmers in Western Australia were killed in 2010 and 2013, the government started culling sharks by baiting drum lines near beaches. Almost 700 sharks, including endangered species, were killed, along with 100 dolphins, turtles, dugongs. All this because less than two humans a year were killed while swimming around in their habitat, which is a bit like if a burrito broke into my house and then tried to kill me and my roommates because I was curious if it tasted good. So a typical Tuesday for you. The point is these animals are an important part of a balanced ecosystem and indiscriminately killing them over an irrational fear is unfair. If you want to swim in rivers and oceans, you're going to have to accept that you're not the only apex predator in it. Plus, there can be other solutions that allow us to stay safe without damaging the environment. For example, drones are getting better and cheaper, and they can be flown over a beach where they can see down through the water and spot sharks long before they're even a danger. Are you still terrified? Oh, totally. I am only swimming in pools from now on. Oh, no, no, bad news, Jules. Not even pools are risk-free. Chastity covered it in this video. These can cause a number of diseases. According to the EPA, up to 3.5 million people become ill from contact with raw sewage sanitary sewer overflows each year. Well, what about you guys? Are you afraid of sharks or do you shrug off the risk? Let us know in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter. Subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time on D News.